where are the Intel GPUs? Or maybe more importantly, when are the G <laughs> Intel GPUs? And how much are the Intel GPUs? Where is Intel Arc? We've been waiting so long. Well, WCCF Tech says that they're friends in Taiwan. So, I don't know. This is not a source I have a track record for. Although, uh, you know, WCCF Tech seems to be presenting this information quite confidently. Say that um, their friends in Taiwan told us that Intel had a call for some of its supply chain members a week ago and revealed some final details about its upcoming ARC launch. Seeing two become three in the discrete GP world, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so basically we're getting some release dates and pricing info out of this. But again, this is not official from Intel. This is WCCF Tech's friends in Taiwan say this is from Intel. So we do have to take this for what it is. But anyway, with all of that caveat, let's go ahead and jump right in. So they're saying that the first wave of desktop GPUs is going to include three GPUs, two launching together, and then one coming weeks later. Okay, so two at first, then one more. The initial launch will be the A750 and the A380, followed by the A580 a few weeks later. Now, if you're confused by the numbering system from Intel, uh, the, the big thing is that it's kind of like their i3, i5, i7 where the A3 is the lower end chip, but then the second number here, there could be various degrees of the three level chip and 80 being uh, the, the higher end of them. Um, the A5 would then be your mid range, kind of like your I5, right? And again, 80 indicating a higher end version of the I5, the A5, sorry. Um, and the uh, 750, again, being higher end than the five or the three, this is your high end branch, but it's only the 50 class here. The A780 will be expected, but does not appear to be part of this initial launch. Okay, now they don't have an exact sales embargo date, but got a range. So they've uh, thrown this together in a little bit of a table here along with a comparable GPU. Now, what I would really like to know here is how, how comparable and where exactly is WCCF Tech getting this information? It's unclear to me whether these comparable GPU targets were also given to them by this same source from Taiwan. Like, is this officially from Intel through this source? Or are they speculating or going off of previous rumors? It does not seem clear to me where they're getting this comparable GPU target. And that's gonna make all the difference on whether these prices are good or horrible, or, you know, somewhere in between. <laughs> okay, so with all that being said, the A750, which remember is higher end branch, but not the top end 780, and there's even some speculation that we might eventually see a 770. Um, is apparently a 3060 competitor for $350 coming towards the end of May, early June. Okay, thoughts on that. Um, if it's re by comparable being the 3060, if it's really just as good or slightly worse than a 3060, I think 350 is way too high, given that 3060s while they're usually more than $400, you can find them, especially from like EVGA's website directly, places like that, you can get 3080s, sorry, not 3080s, geez, 3060s for fairly close to this price point, although still usually it's a bit higher. 380 um, is, is a bit more normal. So that's not a huge discount if it just offers roughly comparable performance especially given the 3060 has 12 gigabytes of VRAM, which is kind of nice. Uh, and, and drivers could be a huge thing here. I think a lot of people are not trusting Intel drivers. So, I mean, I would love to see way, like, like if it's a 3060 competitor launching this late and needing to grab market share, I would love to see $300 or less personally. 
And then don't get me started on if the 580 is really a 3050 competitor, pricing it above the 3050's MSRP. But again, I don't know, like I hope these are wrong, <laughs> okay? Or that these are wrong, but it seemed like they were more confident about their source giving them the pricing info. So 280. Um, so yes, the 3050 usually sells more like 300-ish, but its MSRP is 250. And I bought one for 250 a couple weeks ago. Like you can do it. It's not usually in stock at that price, but it does happen. And if it's, oh man, into, I don't know, man. <laughs> okay, anyway, the 380, a 1650 competitor for $150, uh, tentative July release date on that one. Um, huh. <laughs> okay, so one thing to say about that is, okay, AMD did release the 6400, uh, which is comparable to a 1650. Uh, better on PCIe 4, seemed a little bit worse when it's on PCIe 3. <laughs> um, for 150, what was 159, $160 MSRP recently. So this would put it kind of even with that. And the 6400 is missing an encoder. Like I said, it has the PCIe uh, 3.0 issue well, when it's used on 3.0. So if this didn't have those problems, I mean, the 1650 on the real market does usually sell for more than 150. But, oh man, if, if it was actually low profile and you could feed it off of just PCIe power and really sold at this price, man, I just, none of this is what I was hoping to see as far as aggressive pricing. So I am not happy about that. Um, <laughs> anyway, we'll see, we'll see what happens, but, but there you go. I'm hoping these comparable GPU targets is not correct. However, that would leave room for the 780 to be sort of like a 3060 Ti 3070 level, which um, is what the rumors have been all along, so. I don't know, guys. Uh, now, speaking of Intel drivers, <laughs> uh, video cards, they're pointing out that Intel had promised some specific driver updates by the end of April for their ARC GPUs, and uh, those new drivers didn't come. So <laughs> that's what I mean about people, you know, maybe being a, a bit shaky on trusting the Intel drivers. But anyway, let's talk about some AMD new GPU pricing. So we know that their 50, uh, you know, 6x50 lineup is coming. And according to video cards, they have now confirmed the prices for these. Now, obviously this would be the reference model MSRP and board partners would be free to charge, whatever. But the 6950 XT looks like we're getting a $100 increase over the uh, the original 6900 and the 6750 549 up from what was it 479 so that's uh, yeah that's a that's a big price increase seventy dollars there percentage wise that's a big jump 6650 XT coming in at 399 what is that like a ten dollar <laughs> over the MSRP of the original 6600 XT so not not a huge ask there but I, I hate this. I hate this pricing. As I said in my video talking about their performance leaks, um, if they could increase that performance level and just slot in at their actual MSRPs without trying to issue a price bump, I think these could have been really cool. But we're seeing a lot of their competitor pricing come down. So... <sighs> I don't know, AMD just needs to be careful because if, if they're just offering about the same performance as NVIDIA cards at about the same price, but have worse ray tracing and don't have DLSS and people don't trust their drivers as much and they just don't have as big of a mind share, uh, sorry, but you can't price that aggressively in my, uh, sorry, you can't price this that high in my opinion. And I think 550 is way too high for that. And with the, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know. I don't know, guys. <laughs> um, they've got a slide with that pricing on it. This, this seems legit. I, th I think that is, uh, is going to be the case. I think it's too high. Maybe you guys disagree. 
But the good news is things can sell below MSRP. So if these MSRPs are too high, then to sell them, they'll have to sell for less. So there's that. Now, one last thing with the uh, performance numbers I talked about in my um, previous video on these. Uh, some people did point out in the comment section, and I looked into it, I think they might be right, that the WCCF tech article I was uh, using off of, I think they might have been using some somewhat out of date performance numbers for the base models uh, in, their, in their graph they were showing, which led to it looking like a 20% increase on here, which I said sounded too high, but that was the numbers that they gave. Uh, but it sounds like recent driver updates would make the baseline 6900 XT perform better than it looked like it did in that video, and then would not give us something like a 20% jump. Although, again, that article was listing um, these at, at reference spec without an overclock. So you certainly could uh, get some overclocking in there and get more performance out of them. Now, speaking of these, we've seen some uh, models listed here. Uh, if you just wanted to get an idea of what the board partner models might look like, look at, uh, look at, look like, there you go. Here's some sapphire ones. Might have showed those ones last time as well. Now, a little bit of news. Uh, it looks like the 7900 XT, that is the uh, top-end Navi 31 GPU, uh, could feature PCIe Gen 5 uh, connection, which would make it the first one, although all we have to go off of here is Kepler, who has had some reliable leaks in the past, uh, tweeting us out Chuck Norris giving a thumbs up and saying PCIe Gen 5 16X for Navi 31. So... Cool, that doesn't really <laughs> tell us a whole lot, but this wouldn't actually be that surprising. I think a lot of times AMD has been first to the punch on the new PCIe generation specs on their graphics cards. Somewhat more interesting, but without much information about it, is we're seeing, um, uh, this is from DiscloseUsen, which is one of videocards.com's best sources for reliable information they have got a lot of things right in the past. I would assume this is correct. They're saying that we're gonna be seeing smart access storage coming and that it's first going to be coming to Corsair Voyager laptops and it just says soon. Now, as they point out, we know that the Computex 2022 keynote is being delivered by Lisa Sue. So I, you know, it's interesting to speculate whether we'll hear something about this at that time. It's unclear what smart access storage would be, although I would agree with video cards here that it sounds, you know, like it could be something like direct storage related, although honestly it, it might not be. So <laughs> we'll see, like it, that, that's all we know. There's, there's a thing coming. Now I do generally like the idea of AMD trying to leverage the fact that they produce GPUs and CPUs so you can, maybe have some tighter integration within that platform uh, as compared to like NVIDIA. And they do this with their smart access memory, which in certain games provides some, some big performance boosts. All right, so um, we had seen rumors that the RX 7000 RDNA 3 cards might not support AV1 encoding because that encoding was not listed in some patches that we'd seen. But Kepler is coming back with some evidence in a, in a different uh, patch that uh, AV1 encoding probably will be supported given the listings in the patches there. So I thought I'd just update that. Now, last thing, a little bit with some NVIDIA news. Now, you're probably not gonna run out and buy a Hopper GPU for your gaming PC since that's not what it's for. <laughs> it's a data center GPU. But check this out. So this is a, a four nanometer hopper GPU with 80 gigabytes of HBM3 memory. And we're getting a nice up close uh, shot of it. Previously, we had just seen renders. This GPU is an absolute monster, but like I said, this is a data center GPU. <laughs> we had seen an H100 selling uh, on pre-order in, in Japan for $33,000. So, you know, you might get one, I guess. <laughs> Anyway, speaking of expensive GPUs, the 3090Ti, apparently there's now a uh, XOC BIOS available that unlocks it to a possible 890 watts. So hey, that, that 900 watt GPU, there, there, there you go, here's one. Uh, but this is just a, 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 a BIOS to unlock this for like chasing world record overclocks. So that's the purpose here, don't, don't mistake it. 
And um, it looks like it does support at least the ASUS Tough model, I believe, uh, right here as well. Uh, that one going up to six, 615, it looks like they're actually getting that with the GPU itself drawing just about 500 watts here. Now, uh, keep in mind that if you do try to track this down, I believe uh, you can get it um, on Tech Power Up now, be as well as it was originally on the Chip Hell forum. But as uh, as always, you know, un installing these uh, custom BIOS and all, all that kind of stuff here could damage your card or whatever. So always be careful. Anyway, that's what I've got for you guys today. And um, man, I hope some of that pricing ends up either being lower or the performance is better than expected because I was hoping to see more aggressive pricing from both AMD and Intel on these. What do you guys think? Let me know. Have an excellent day.